And COVID has taken its toll on the travel industry, but we'll introduce you to a new technology that might bring safer travels. It's Tuesday, February 16th. I'm Renita Young in New York. Those stories and more coming up on Quick Take the Lead. Now, in the travel industry, companies have struggled to fully keep tabs on COVID-19 on board its planes, trains, and boats. But one cybersecurity company, VST Enterprises, launched V-Health Passport, and it's working to keep travelers and travel industry workers safe with a highly secure digital QR code and with testing. And so the app has been in use in the UK and has rolled out to several parts of the world. CEA CEO Lewis James Davis joins us live right now. Thank you for being here, Lewis James. Tell us, how does this digital passport work and who's using it right now? Uh, so essentially what you do is you, you book a test through the vHealth Passport platform. Uh, once you've been for a test, you get this thing called a V-code which is the next generation of barcode. So it's end-to-end -end secure. It can be scanned outside of that two metre safe distancing zone. And it's up to 10 seconds faster than the QR codes were originally. So who is using it? We've got airlines using it, maritime companies using it, and also close proximity businesses such as construction companies as well. And most recently we're moving into the education sector with schools, universities, and also casinos as well. This is really interesting. What's been the response from some of the people who use the app? Have they seen any kind of results, maybe in lowered infection rates or what, what's been the response? Uh, so to give you an example, on the first day back after New Year's Eve, 14 percent of the people we tested in our platform tested positive. Mm -hmm. uh, so you could say that that was a very good response. We, we stopped the spread there by using the health passport. And also by scanning the V codes, we measured who they were uh, interacting with as well. So we was able to notify them effectively and say, you need to be retested because you've been in a positive contact. OK, it sounds just that simple. And so there's I read a function built into the app where distance actually matters when you are scanning the code. Can you explain more about that and why it's different from other similar technology? Yeah, so the simple maze design of the V-code allows you to scan at two to three meters away on a device-to-device -device basis. But originally we built it for consumer interaction, so you could scan it over a football pitch, for instance. Uh, so it's really easy to scan, and it just so happens that it's really good for this situation that we're in with COVID, that you can scan outside that safe distancing zone. That does sound safe, and it's beyond the six feet uh, registered or six feet recommended space. Um, a lot of people want to make sure they're farther away. And so switching gears very quickly. Uh, now, you've talked about how this prevents fraud um, and other officials, um, health officials and government officials have warned people against um, other technology that does not. So tell me, how does your app work to prevent fraud, the COVID passport. Yeah, so because the V-code itself is in a centralized database, so they can only exist once in our system, it stops people from being able to manipulate that part of it. So QR codes are free for the world to encode and decode, which means they can expose the data behind them. And that means they can just create them at will and either stick one on top of the other or decode and push bad data into the system. Whereas V-Code, it has to hit the centralized system first to decide where it needs to go. So you always know if you interact with a V-Code that it is a real V-Code and you're going to get a genuine response to it. OK, and that that really makes sense. I mean, but I wonder, though, and you might have referenced this quickly, um, but tell us a little bit more about how this may protect against passengers who may not be being truthful about their COVID status. Uh, so the way we've built it is that you have to go and see a health visitor, a health uh, person to get your uh, passport populated with a test or a vaccine. Uh, even though you can have a vaccine passport within our system, we always uh, make sure you have a test alongside it. So we've got your most up to date uh, test results in there. And we feel that airlines and maritime companies will 
opt for a test alongside a vaccine regardless, because at the moment they don't know if you're going to um, spread the virus, even if you've had the vaccine or not. Okay. And so switching gears again, I'm wondering, are customers actually charged for the service right now? Um, and if not, um, then who's currently funding the service? Uh, so it's a free to use platform. You can download the app for free. You can apply for a test for free. Uh, if the government in your country uh, pays for your tests or your vaccines, then it would be a free passport. Uh, but the consumer never sees the price of the passport because it's consumed by the test cost. OK, it's consumed. And so I read also that cruise ships and maritime outlets, they're going to be using this. So tell us why it's so useful there and Will you get other industries on board? Uh, so one of the, the key factors of the V-code is the fact that the V-code can give off different information based on who is scanning it. So let's say you scanned my code in America today, that could give you a different result based on your geolocation. But it can also give off different results based on time and date, the device type that you're scanning it with, how many times you've interacted with it. So if I walked up to a, a cruise company, it could be my health pass and my boarding pass at the same time, mm -hmm. whereas that same code could be access to a restaurant, for instance, or it could be a theater ticket at the nighttime, as well as my health passport. Okay, and... So it is really a overall solution in that sense. All right, it does sound like it's a solution. We'll definitely be looking out to find out how it fares in the different countries. Lewis James Davis, CEO of VST Enterprises, thank you so much for joining us. Now that'll do it for this half hour of Quick Take the Lead. Stay with us for more. We'll be right back in two minutes.